everyone, Andrea Praber here with Great Expectations Realty, and it is Monday, so it's time for What's Up Ocala. Um, I don't know about you guys, but it's been like the Monday of all Mondays. I know I've said that before, but wow, today I was just like, oh my goodness, what on earth is going on with this craziness? Uh, but I think I was able to handle it pretty good, but that's only because I did my prep on Sunday like I'm supposed to. Um, so I don't know if you guys know or not, but normally I don't work Sundays and it's not really for religious reasons or anything. It's not like I have, um, Sabbath or something like that. It's just that, um, I do think I need a day down from rest or I need a day of rest and I need, um, a day down from real estate because it's hard to do real estate like 24 seven. Um, and you know, some time with my family and stuff, but I also use it. Um, for my prep, which is just so incredibly important. I don't know if you guys out there are, um, you know, the same way if you like prep for your week, maybe if it's not quite as, um, I don't know, psychotic as I go about it. <laughs> but I actually like, I was writing down, um, you know, the stuff that I needed to do for yesterday. So of course I have, um, my, you know, morning worship, my, um, it's all through zoom still. We've never actually gone back, um, yet. So I'm hoping someday, you know, to get hugs and stuff again, but so far that's not happened. So, <laughs> so we're still on zoom in our congregation. Um, of course, you know, all the congregation. So, um, anyway, but that is what we're doing and that. So that's in the morning, um, from like 10 to about 1145 ish, somewhere in there. All right. Um, and of course I do all my laundry towels and stuff like that. And my husband actually helps with that. Although I think he's actually allergic to putting clothes away. Like he'll wash it, he'll dry it, but that's as far as it goes. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are like that too, but he just, it ain't going to leave the laundry room. Okay. That's where, <laughs> that's where it goes to disappear. So anyway, um, so I finish up the laundry, finish up, you know, the rest of, you know, whatever needs to be washed. And then, uh, do that. And then I set up my clothes for the week. And apparently a lot of people don't do that, which I find very bizarre, but I mean, how on earth do you get through each day? Um, but I've been doing this kind of for years, really. Um, I'll literally take all of my clothes for the week and like socks, underwear, everything, shirt, pants, everything. And then I put it together and I roll it up and put it in the drawer. <laughs> It's kind of weird, right? I don't know. Describing it, it seems kind of weird. Um, and normally I'll have outfits, you know, almost like a uniform. Now this year, of course, I went to an actual uniform. So I have these blue polos, whereas I know I have the name on here somewhere. Yeah, there we go. So I've got a whole slew of these blue polos um, and a pair of black pants or a skirt. And that's basically what I wear. And it makes it very simple and um, they're really super comfortable. Uh, that's pretty much what started is because they're like they breathe, you know, they're, it's like a mesh almost and it's just so comfortable. So anyway, so I wear those, um, and I can pretty much wear it anywhere. Um, if there's a really, you know, big thing for the chamber of commerce, I can wear it and I'm still okay. Um, you know, aside from, you know, a fancy dinner out with friends or something, obviously I'm not going to wear it there, but for the most part, I wear it, um, every weekday. And so it just makes it just super simple to throw in a gym bag and I'm good to go. And the gym bags, I prep those, make sure I've got, you know, everything I need as far as like, you know, soap for a shower and, you know, whatever. And that's all in there. And I just, you know, recheck it um, and put that together on Sunday. Um, and of course, all my gym clothes sets. So I have my work clothes and then I have my gym clothes and I do all of those for the week as well. So I've literally got like anywhere between 12 and 14 sets of clothes out on the bed. And it's like everything from shirt, pants, you know, bra, underwear, everything is all set. Socks, everything is all set. Um, and then that goes in the drawer and I just, you know, help myself throughout the week. So during the week, I don't have to like worry about my clothes at all. It literally is a couple of hours on Sunday and then I'm done. I never have to even ponder the possibility of clothes for the rest of the week unless I want to. Um, I can always change it up but it just makes it so I don't have to think about it if I don't want to. So anyway, so I do that. It's like five to seven sets of gym clothes, five to seven sets of work clothes, refill and repack my gym bags. Of course, deep clean the kitchen because, you know, throughout the week it does not get deep cleaned. It kind of gets meh, you know? So clean out that, you know, vinegar down the sink and all that fun stuff. Um, and then I also, 
get my groceries on Sunday. It makes it sound like it's just, you know, something so laborious or whatever. I go grocery shopping. Y'all, I made it easy ever since actually before coronavirus and quarantine and all that. I actually was using the Walmart where you pull into the thing and they load up the car. Well, man, after quarantine hit, that was like the most popular thing on the planet. And then I ended up sitting there one night for over an hour waiting for them to deliver my groceries. I was like, okay, not going to do this anymore. Because if you really think about what you make per hour and then divide it, um, you know, if you figure out what you make per week and then divide it hourly and then you're like, okay, I just wasted this amount of money, um, it just doesn't make it any sense whatsoever. So I looked at how much it cost to deliver and it was nothing. It was hardly nothing at all. Especially since if I go grocery shopping at Publix, which I love to go grocery shopping at Publix, it's more expensive than like at Aldi or Walmart or something like that. So I get the basic stuff, the bigger items or whatever, the bulk items or whatever. I get that at Walmart, have them deliver it once a week, you know, like cases of water. Dude, I don't want to go carry cases of bottled water into my house. Um, so do all of that stuff. Um, every week I have like this ongoing shopping list throughout the week. Oh, we need this. We need that. We know. Well, I click on either Saturday night or Sunday morning deliver and Sunday is not a big delivery day for them. So, um, it cost me like seven 95 or something for them to deliver it to my house. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. They bring it right to the door. So I don't have to go to the store, which is like 15 minutes away. Um, go shopping, spending like an hour of my life buying unnecessary items that I do not need just because they're on sale or I see them and they look pretty. Um, and then, or go into other parts of Walmart. That's a bad plan too. I'll end up buying like a jump rope and I don't need a jump rope. Anyway, I'll go <laughs> to all that. Then I've got to go through the cash registers. Have y'all ever gone through the cash registers at Walmart? You will be there until the end of time. Okay. They've got like three cash registers open and like 50 registers available. It's so annoying. Then you get up there and invariably the person in front of you is like writing a check and they have to go through who knows what to get that through. And it's like, okay. And then there's hooligans acting like crazy and it's just, it's just a mess. So, um, anyway, and then you have to load it from the thing into your cart, into the cart, into your car, get home from there. Then you have to load it into the house and then you have to put it away. It's exhausting. And it takes hours of your life. And again, you spend more money and heaven help you if you go shopping hungry. I just click, 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 done. Okay. So at some point, sometimes they're on time, sometimes they're not, but I don't care. I'm home anyway. So they bring that, drop it off. I love it. It's wonderful. Um, Publix, Walmart, Aldi, I believe does it as well through Instacart and stuff. It's an amazing time saver. So do that. Anyway, then I go ahead and the whole time I am making like breakfast and lunches for the week. So I will get and make like a whole bunch of the muffins. And, um, I do muffins pretty much like all day, like throughout the day. I'm just, I make this huge batch and then I'm just constantly spooning it, cooking it, <laughs> emptying it. And then they go in freezer bags. So, um, only one bag doesn't go in the freezer bag and that goes over by the coffee machine. So I'm not a huge muffin person, but David, Lindsay, and Lexi, they all love the muffins. So I leave the muffins over by the coffee and then like halfway through the week they're out of muffins I grab another one from the grocery from the freezer put it over by the thing and then they've got fresh muffins again so um and I make different kinds so they don't get bored so I think I made like I don't know I think six dozen muffins that'll probably last me two to three weeks and then of course I make sandwiches because those are super easy to freeze do you know you can freeze peanut butter and jelly sandwiches Yes, you can. And it's super easy. And you can just load it right back into the same bread bag. You know, put them in like sandwich bags, individual sandwich bags. Stick it right back in the bread bag. I lay it peanut butter and jelly so I know what in the world I've thrown in the bag. Pop it in the freezer. And then they actually get it out frozen. And it just kind of defrosts <laughs> throughout the day. So Lexi, she doesn't need to put in a, a little ice pack in with her lunch. She actually just takes it frozen. And it's funny because she can get school lunches at school and she doesn't like them. She'd rather just grab a frozen sandwich. And by the time it's lunchtime, it's all nice and thawed out and, you know, it's not soggy. So she does that. Um, I did find out with um, chicken salad. My husband loves chicken salad and I can easily do chicken salad at home. It's so easy. 
Um, but I actually got these little plastic um, containers that have a lid on them. They're just like yay big. They're only like, I don't know, two ounces or something like that. Uh, but I didn't want to put the chicken salad on the, because it'd be all mushy and gross. So those, I actually, the, the bags are big enough to put the little thing of chicken salad and two pieces of bread. And I put that in and then I put those in the freezer. So he goes in and by the time, and he doesn't like defrost anything by the time he leaves in the morning. And then by the time he's ready to eat, it's defrosted. So he just plunks it onto the sandwich and kind of mushes it around. There you go. He's got a sandwich. Anyway, silly, silly stuff like that. Um, but I do a whole slew of those. Uh, we probably have sandwiches in there for like six weeks. Each week I do a different kind of sandwich. So, um, I actually did turkey and Munster cheese, uh, yesterday. Um, I don't know how that's going to turn out. I had one, but it wasn't bad. So, um, but again, same thing, freeze it and then it, they defrost and go ahead and eat it for lunch. But anyway, um, so I had, I had those, but I didn't have a whole slew of them. So I finished off with peanut butter and jelly ones. Cause I want to make sure there's plenty of sandwiches. It's kind of like dinner. Like if I make dinner, I make dinner for a lot of people. And then I just either freeze it or put it in the fridge for leftovers. Like leftovers. I know some of y'all are going, we don't do leftovers at our house. Leftovers are amazing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> leftovers are great especially sometimes they don't even get the meal I'll like I will make two meals at once and one is going to the fridge for tomorrow and one is gonna be <laughs> so, so crazy I know so anyway I'll I'll do extra normally on Sunday I will throw you know those family packs of chicken from Walmart I threw the whole thing into um the instapot and with some seasoning and stuff you know not overly just kind of a little bit bland but still tasting good you know some Lowry seasoning salt and stuff anyway throw that in there and 20 minutes later I have chicken and I dice it up and you can either put it on salads or like I said you can make chicken salad out of it you can do whatever you can make some enchiladas there's so many things you can do with some cooked chicken and that's just sitting in the fridge so it's just it's to make my entire week go so much faster and simpler because I don't want to come home and worry about who's cooking do we have the ingredients? Did anybody go shopping? I just want it done. I just, I don't have time to mess around with that kind of stuff. Anyway, so that's the kind of stuff that I do. Um, yesterday I made a big old batch of chili as well. Um, again, it was just, I had the ingredients for it. So I wanted to go ahead. I had to cook up some ground turkey. So, um, I went ahead and made that. Um, that's sitting in there. They can either have it for lunches if they don't feel like a sandwich, or they can have it for dinner or whatever. So, really good stuff. Um, let's see. I was reorganized the pantry. I have some of those um, those can dispensers. You know how in the pantry, I don't have a walk-in pantry. I'm so jealous of all y'all that have walk-in pantries. But I have just like the regular door pantry, you know, just like almost like bookshelves, but a door closes over it. Anyway, so on the sides, I noticed there was like a seven inch gap on the sides. And I'm like, that is space I could use. So I found some six and a half inch can dispensers. So you put the cans in there and they dispense out the bottom. So I'm going to do that on, all the way on both sides. But I only got one set of three because I want to make sure they fit before I go and buy a whole slew of them. But I thought that was pretty cool. Can you imagine having like, you know, your whole pantry, but not having cans in there, which cans are really bad to put in there anyway, because they move the shelves down. So I'm going to put those up on the sides and we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, what else? That's pretty much it. Um, got my nails done. Um, <laughs> my husband and I go back and forth about my nails. He doesn't realize, okay, he really does not realize how much as a woman you can truly spend on your physical appearance. Okay. Like I stopped even like dyeing my hair. This, this is my natural color. It's basically calico, I guess is like some are light, some dark, some, I don't know. It's some, it's a little bit of red. I don't know. It's just a little everything anyway. So I don't do anything to it. I literally going at this point, I don't even have bangs. So anymore, cause apparently that went out of style and nobody gave me the memo. Uh, so this year, <laughs> 
<laughs> I let my hair all grow out from quarantine and everybody's like, wow, that looks so much better. I'm like, go figure. Apparently if you stop messing with it, it looks better. So, but, um, but I do have, you know, I want to go and get my nails done, make sure that they don't look like crazy. And, um, you know, maybe there's a small issue with biting my nails. So I make sure my nails look nice all the time. Cause if they don't look nice, then I want to like, I don't know. I just, it just doesn't. Yeah. So anyway, but I do like to keep them short and I found this on Amazon for like 10, 15 bucks. And it basically, cause I don't have time to wait around. I never can wait for my nails to dry and then I'm in, I end up jacking them up and then it's just, I have to go to the, the nail salon and have them fix it for like 10 bucks or whatever. I'm like, if I buy that thing for like 15, I don't have to go in and pay them 10 to go and like, this is a serious savings here. So, um, I tried it out a couple times and I actually really like it. So, ah, so yeah, I know he thinks I'm crazy, but it's okay. I think $15 and I have enough. Oh, I have so much nail polish in there. It's insane. Like I see a pretty color and I get it. And then it's like, and I don't even like paint my own nails, but yeah. So anyway, so now I've, I've got my nails figured out except for my toenails. I'm still going to have to go in once in a while and get that done. Cause I can never get those looking right. I don't know. Maybe you guys got some tips and tricks that I don't know. So that was my Sunday. That's my Sunday pretty much every week. And, um, it sounds really hectic and chaotic and really busy and stuff, but it's just actually my down day. Um, I enjoy prepping and I enjoy, you know, cleaning up my house and making it feel like it's, you know, my own. And I don't know, it's just, it's a nice refresh and gets you all set and ready to go for a Monday. Um, so my Monday basically imploded this morning. I had people just absolutely, <laughs> it was just chaos and mayhem. Um, for multiple agents, I had my first phone call at like 7.30 in the morning. I do not answer phone calls at 7.30 in the morning unless there is literally a house on fire, which has not happened yet. Um, I don't answer my phone at 7.30 in the morning because then everybody will be calling me at 7.30 in the morning. And that's not, no, it's not like I can really even do much anyway because I'm going to be like, you know, they're asking questions that are, that I need the computer for and I'm not looking at the computer at 7.30 in the morning. So anyway, so I don't do that. I normally have already sent emails um, out the night before. And did you know that you can schedule emails? I do that all the time. I schedule emails, text messages, everything. So I'll be sitting there at 11 o'clock at night, which is when I just get like, I have to just brain dump everything out um, in order for me to sleep. <laughs> I sound nuts. Um, but I'll literally just sit there and put all these emails together and stuff. But I don't want to be emailing people at 11 o'clock at night. That's rude. So I'll set it so that it sends emails out at like 8 or 9 o'clock the next morning. And then um, that just seems to work pretty well for me. So everybody thinks I'm sitting there emailing them at 8 in the morning. And they think I'm like so productive. And actually, I'm at the gym working my butt off literally. It's like, it's it's going. It's very much back there now. So that's good. Um, all right. So that is basically what I do on Sunday. On Saturdays, I normally go and go all over the place. I'll go and do events because that's when most of the events are anyway. Um, but I go around town. I want to see what's happening, what's going on, spend some time with my family. Um, that's when I do the majority of my YouTube videos for you guys is on Saturday. And then we edit them throughout the week. That's why you get them throughout the week. But it's normally stuff that's happened over the weekend. Um, because that's just, you know, that's an easier, easier thing for us to do. So like, for example, the stuff that are coming up, we've got the Danellen duck race this Saturday. So I will be there with bells on basically. Okay. We still, we've got one of the ducks figured out. His name is Charles Duckins. I'm quite, quite thrilled with that name. Okay. And it was actually, um, one of, um, the people I've met through YouTube. It was actually his, he was saying Chucky in, um, uh, Chuck and Dickens. So Chuck and Dicky, but I really like Charles Duckins a little bit better. So we're going to go with Charles Duckins on one. And I'm still trying to figure out what the other little guy's name is going to be. I've gotten a few different ideas from people. Oh, dear. Hold on. Ooh, sorry. Um, a few different ideas from people and um, haven't quite figured out yet what we're going to do. So we'll, we're still working on that one. Um, yeah, nothing like waiting till the last minute, right? But anyway, but one is definitely called Charles Duckins because that's freaking hilarious. 
Uh, but that is the Danellen duck race. We are going to be doing that on Saturday. And then our office is just down the street. It's not quite walking distance, um, but it is just down the street. So I'll be over there uh, afterwards and just hanging out. If you want to stop in and say hi, that would be awesome. If you want to ask some questions about real estate, that would be cool too. But we're going to be doing some giveaways and stuff like that there. So come on by. We're, we're right across the railroad tracks from the Danellen Chamber of Commerce. So feel free to stop in. Um, oh, one of my favorite events is coming up. I went to the first one they ever had, which is, I think, down in 2014 or 2004. Okay, so anyway, I cannot believe it's still going on. But over in Inverness, which Inverness, Florida is in Citrus County. It's, I don't know, about maybe 20 minutes south of Danellen. I guess would be the best way to say it. Anyway, so it's in Citrus County. That's Inverness. Okay, so Inverness has the Inverness Cooter Festival. And I know that sounds like something dirty. It's not. It's actually a soft shell turtle that they have over there. And it's actually uh, the Cooter Pond, which is really more of a lake. I'm sorry, but it's more of a lake. Anyway, so the Cooter Pond is over there and they've got this festival that they've had for years and years and years. I went to the first one ever. And there was a whole Cooter controversy back then because they had like, um, you know, they had the official um, Cooter Festival t-shirts which were done for like by the Comber, the chamber of commerce or something like that and then they had like somebody else was writing up um some kind of you know risque t-shirts and the risque t-shirts were selling a lot better than the official t-shirts so they were all kinds of mad but it was really funny and um the whole thing was just really really good anyway but yeah, definitely if you have a chance to go to the Cooter Festival, it is October 29th, 30th, and 31st. They have Cooter races, and um, I don't know if they um, have uh, gotten a whole bunch of uh, more of the risque t-shirts or not, but they were pretty funny. I kind of wish I had a bought one back then and like kept it, but um, I think I got one of the official t-shirts, but I don't know where it is. I mean, that was... That was a while ago. I think it was back in 2004, maybe. I don't know. It was a while ago. So, but yeah, they have that and um, they have, oh man, they have so much stuff. It's basically like um, a big old fair, but they have, it's mostly a music festival. They really celebrate music with it. So really fun. A lot of fun. We go about every, I don't know, every couple of years we'll go to it. And it's just, it seems like it's bigger and better every single time. So it's all outdoor stuff. Uh, what else? We have the Ocala Art and Food Festival. That's on, um, October 2nd. So that's coming up. Oh, oh, oh. And Oktoberfest is coming up as well. That's actually on, I think it starts on Friday, actually. So, um, double, double check on that. But Oktoberfest in Ocala is coming up. And then the Micanopy Fall Festival. Yes, that is how you pronounce it. Micanopy. M-I-C-A-N-O-P-Y. Micanopy. Okay, so Micanopy Fall Festival, that is on October 30th. That's coming up as well. Um, and then I'm trying to get a video for you guys of the local YMCA because it's huge and it's new and beautiful and it's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, that's the Frank DeLuca YMCA Sportsplex, um, but they just got an outdoor airnesium. And so they've got like basketball, volleyball, four pickleball courts. What is with the pickleball? Everybody's doing pickleball now. I don't know. Um, but they've got three additional soccer fields. And that's all that just, it just broke ground in uh, January. So that's actually just finishing up. Um, but yeah, so I'm trying to get you guys a tour over there. We're in talks with them. I mean, I could just walk in and say, hey, somebody okay with me doing YouTube? But it would be really fun to, like, show you everything. And it's much easier to do that when nobody's in there because I really have to be very careful about putting people on the videos when they don't want to be on the videos. So, um, anyway, I'm really, really careful with that. But uh, I don't know how to blur people out yet. I'm still learning, y'all. I'm really, I'm trying my best, but I'm still learning. But, um... Anyway, so if I could get in there when it's like closed and just do a real quick, you know, 10, 15 minutes before they open, that would be awesome. So we're, we're in talks with that. Um, but I was, they, some people don't get my channel. Um, 
we were asking them if that would be okay if we could, you know, stop in and get a real quick tour off hours. And they're like, um, sure, yeah, we would love the, you know, love the exposure. They're like, how much do you charge for that? And we're like, no, <laughs> we don't charge for that. Um, I was really confused. So they're like, wait, you want to give us like a video and you're going to make the video and edit and everything and tour the facilities, but you're not going to charge for it. And we're like, no, we just need to like take some video. So we're still working on that one. So anyway, we'll see. Um, also, there was this really cool idea that the, I, I'm going to say the new police chief, it's not really, he's not that new anymore, but for us, he's new. So anyway, um, so the police chief actually created a police car ice cream truck. And it's basically to give, um, you know, a more, a better perception of police for children because a lot of them are thinking of police in a negative way, especially with everything that's on TV and stuff. Um, so they wanted it to be more of a community type thing. Um, so I'm hoping to get some pictures myself, but here's the pictures of what it looks like. Is that not so adorable? It's so cute. It's got a little baby penguin with police stuff on it. Anyway, it was just so cute. So cute. Um, but he the he said that he wants the ice cream truck as a way to engage with the children in the community and let them have an accurate perception of the police. He said they exist to partner with the community and to build relationships that can eventually lead to solving problems. Um, but it's basically just a small minivan. It's colorful. It's got the cartoon character on it. It's just like a policeman and he's holding pol um, popsicles and it has that familiar musical sound of an ice cream truck. Um, and of course they're, they're giving away the ice cream. So I thought that was a nifty idea. I don't know if, um, if he got that from like another community or what, but I thought that was a great idea for our community. So, all right. So you guys probably want to know about real estate. Cause that's actually why you watch my channel, right? You couldn't care less what I do in my house for Sundays. Um, market watch. Here we are from Marion County last 24 hours. We have 40 new listings. It's not bad, right? 40 new listings. Um, 85 went pending. All right, y'all, we're going the wrong direction again. Need to go back the <laughs> at least a nice half and half, could we, please? And so we'll we'll keep an eye on that. Maybe tomorrow we'll have some better numbers. It might matter. Um, I just mean I like to have like to see a nice stable. <laughs> real estate. Um, the highs and lows and highs and lows, um, it makes it for a very unstable, unpredictable market. And that's not good for anybody, buyers or sellers. That's, that's very dangerous. So we don't want to do that. We want to have a nice stable market and it's definitely been going in that direction and it is stabilizing. Um, but then we have days like this where it's like, okay, and we're off the tracks again. What in the world? Um, but I think a lot of it, um, is, you know, we had some people that were wanting to be close, you know, closing before the end of next month. They kind of want to do a mad dash before the holidays. So this is pretty much it. If you want to be in your new home before the holidays, now would be the time to get under contract because by the time it closes and you actually get handed the keys, you're going to be well into the end of October. So... Anyway, so you got a little bit of time left, but not much. All right, new listings 40. We have price increase one, price decrease 23. Well, that gives a little bit of hope for that stabilized market. Um, back on the market 19, sold 32, expired one. That's weird. And leased five. Um, temporarily off the market four and canceled three. We had zero withdrawn. So that is what's happened in the last 24 hours. It's kind of, kind of interesting. You can kind of see over the weeks as I've been giving you these stats, kind of how the market has changed and shifted and everything. So kind of interesting. Um, I like walk, looking at it every morning. I give it to you guys once a week because I mean, really you can tell a lot from it once a week. I'm just a little obsessive. But that is one thing that I definitely do in the morning over coffee is just check the numbers real quick. Um, but there are some pretty good deals that I've been seeing popping up. Um, we, of course, are looking at some 
foreclosures coming up pretty soon. Uh, there was a lot of time frame where they weren't having any foreclosures, but that is now coming to an end. We're not going to see them immediately. It does take time to get through the court system. And of course, with all of them hitting all at once, it's going to be backlogged. Um, but we will start seeing foreclosures again. And, uh, you know, everybody's like, oh my goodness, it's all going to, you know, it's going to be this huge bubble burst. Or no, not necessarily. Um, we are going to have more foreclosures than usual all at once because we haven't had any. This is the backlog for a couple of essentially a couple years by the time it gets through the courts and everything it's going to be about two years so it'll be two years worth of foreclosures all at once um but you know again these are foreclosures that should have been happening this whole time through normally in any market good or bad you still have foreclosures um so a lot of those are be coming through the fear is that we're going to have a whole slew of foreclosures here um because of covid and everything that I don't really see as a huge fear for Marion County. Yes, we will have a few, but not that many, honestly. Because um, you got to think, during um, quarantine and COVID and everything during 2020, we actually ended up with more employment and like more employee opportunities than we did in 2019. So we're growing and we had we had an Amazon distribution center open during quarantine. Like, who does that? Seriously. But um, with all the distri distribution centers opening and all the employment opportunities and everything, um, right now they're pushing. Like, if you ever wanted to go looking for a new job, this would be the time to do it. Um, they're like, hey, you can get free food. You can get, like, free. Just come work here so we can open the restaurant. That would be awesome. Um, there's all sorts of stuff that they're doing. Sign-on bonuses and stuff. I mean, this is just craziness. So, because we have all of those job opportunities, I don't really think that we're going to have a major influx of, yeah, I couldn't pay my mortgage. So, um, yeah, I went into foreclosure. A foreclosure takes a very long time and the banks also have incentives to help them as well with that. So, uh, government incentives to help with the mortgage. Plus there was a lot of things that they could do around. So, Anyway, um, short sales, I think we'll probably see more short sales than anything, but foreclosures, no, no, not around here. I'm sure around the country, yeah, that's going to be a very different story. Uh, I heard some crazy stuff because, of course, I'm in all these groups for uh, property management and all sorts of stuff, you know, with the rents and what was rent was paying and not paying, whatever. That some of them had like 30% non-payment with rent. That's Crazy. We had like 2% in our brokerage. Uh, we were very proactive about communication and stuff, but at the same time, we didn't have nearly the issues that other places had. So um, that was that was a really, really good thing. So um, I will say, <laughs> heads up, we are still uh, very much a rental shortage here. And I feel like really bad for um, people that are like calling me up going, okay, well I need, you know, I was asked for a four bedroom. I've asked for a two bedroom. I'm like, look, we only have what we have. We do not have a whole, so we're not hiding them. <laughs> They're just, we only have what we have. So, um, I never have complaints on, um, the houses I rent out to people. It's the complaints are normally when I can't rent out to someone. So, um, we're doing the absolute best we can with what we have. Um, but I, I'm trying, I'm working with investors and stuff to go ahead and get more houses into property management so that we will have more houses to rent out. But as it stands right now, what we have is what we have. So, um, and people aren't moving, you know, they just, they're not, they do not want to move out, um, at all because, there's just nowhere to move to. So it's just crazy the problems that it, and we have so many owners that are selling the homes. And so even if the tenant wants to stay and they've been a great tenant and paid every a month, they're still being asked to move out. So keep in mind, if you are paying rent, you are renting a home, you are paying the mortgage for the owner. You do not own the home. Some tenants forget that, especially if they've been there for a while, like four or five, six years or whatever. Every time the lease comes up, 
you have a level of unpredictability and unstable instability. Thank, thank you very much. Anyway, instability. So, you know, despite the fact you're a great tenant, because the rate of sales has gone up so much, these investors, they're investors. This is, this is an income for them. This is a lot of times it's their retirement. Um, so, you know, <laughs> they're going to sell. So even though you've been a fantastic tenant, you may be stuck in the position of having to move unexpectedly um, at the end of the lease term. So just keep that in mind. If you know that you need to um, rent for another year, if you're in a rental and you know you need to rent for another year, before the rental expires, ask for a lease. Ask for another lease. Um because that'll give you that stability that you need in order to make your long-term plans. And if they don't give you a lease right away, go ahead and start making plans to move because that may be what the issue is. So just a heads up on that. But anyway, we're doing all we can for everybody. We're trying to help as much as possible. Um, but yeah, it is a very difficult market for rentals right now. You would think it would be just all, you know, sunshine and daisies if I've got like you know I'm doing property management and there's a major rental shortage hey that sounds like a great plan no it is not good fun it is not fun at all because then I have to um let the tenants know that they need to move out because the owner is selling the house and they're upset and there's tears and there's it is just oh my goodness and I am like the wicked witch of the west I'm like look it's their house they get to sell it if they want to Oh my goodness. Oh, the drama. It is not fun. Um, not fun at all. It is just not a fun place to be at all. So, um, that, and then of course, you know, people asking for rentals and we don't have them or we have them and then like the owners want like astronomical amounts of rent for them. Not fun. That is not fun. So yeah, I'm like, please, please, please just buy a house, please. Please just buy a house. I will do anything to help you in that endeavor. Please just buy a house. <laughs> so, anyway, but that is my Monday. Hopefully your Monday went fabulous. And hopefully you will enjoy the videos this week that I was just working on. It was so much fun. Um, I rode a hog at the Bacon Festival. And we'll just leave that right there. Um, uh, there are some really fun videos this week. So anyway, hopefully you guys like them. We're just working on the editing. So yeah. Anyway, um, talk to you guys soon and have a great week. Bye.